So it looks like um, um, Jean and I and uh, um, Nathaniel are in charge of scribing today. So. Uh, the scribing. So taking notes and putting it on. So. Uh, it's not you. So. Um, Jing Yang and Jing Yang. I replaced the Sina. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you guys swapped. Okay, 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 great. Um, and uh, so, so when you're doing the scribing, um, please don't, um, t uh, please don't spend too much time on it. Uh, there's the templates. Just write stuff off of the templates so it looks roughly like the stuff that's that's in there. So just kind of put more words to the notes I already have on the web page. Um, so it's the, peop the people who have turned those in already um, usually spent uh, more time on them than they needed to. Uh, so, um, so the uh, um, the other thing is that the um, the intermediate reports for the project are supposed to be due today. Um, um, so I'm pretty flexible. Um, on the deadline, actually, so so it's just uh, on just like a one-page report. Um, so if, if you if you get to me sometime today, then I'll be able to get you feedback on Friday. And the basic point again to re just remind you is is that you know I'm I'm hoping you've done some stuff so I can give you more specific direction of what you need to do to kind of finish up so you're ready for the presentation at the end of the semester. So it's more me giving you guidance of what to do than you actually having to read certain milestones. But if you haven't done anything yet, then I can't really give you guidance. And so if, if that's the case, I suggest you actually probably wait um, uh, until, um, until you've done a little bit more and then turn something in. Um, so I will be traveling all of next week. So if you turn in by today, I'll give you feedback Friday. If not, uh, wait until I get back, and then I'll give you feedback after I get back. Or if you email me something, that's fine too. I can send send some send you notes. Okay. So there's also no class next week. Uh, all right. So uh, today we're going to do the last um, the last section on just algorithms in. Um, just regular parallel algorithms, and then on Friday, I'm going to introduce um, 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 I'm gonna introduce MapReduce and talk a little bit about the the architecture, the reasoning behind it, and kind of the, a little bit about the models. And then we'll we'll talk. So so after you do that, I'll I'll talk about some kind of algorithms which are kind of newer and specific to MapReduce. Um, and mainly because the, the sorts of problems people weren't asking as, as much when people were studying PRAM, which dates back, you know, maybe 20 or 30 years. Um, but so we'll also talk about how to, if you really want an algorithm in MapReduce and there exists an algorithm in PRAM, there's a way of saying, well, you can kind of take the PRAM algorithm and fit that into MapReduce. Right, so part of the reason for studying these these PRAM models are actually these, you know, should actually look at the BSP versions of them, but they're often pretty similar to each other, is that you can also apply these to um, problems in MapReduce. And sometimes, so usually when you do that, that's not going to be the best exact way of doing it, but the concepts and the main ideas are um, often be, um, going to be pretty similar. So we'll talk about specializing them when we get to MapReduce. And some of this will also apply to doing stuff with, uh, um, with GPUs, which we'll spend a couple lectures on after we're done with the, the MapReduce stuff. Um, OK. So uh, um, um, so today we'll be talking about parallel algorithms again. And so we'll be talking specifically about um, the selection problem and um, the max problem. So this is finding the kth ranked element in a set. This is finding the largest ranked element. And I'll, I'll define these more specifically 
in a bit, but just recall the model. We're assuming um, this model where we have this, this random access memory, it's parallel random access. That means that if you have um, a bunch of these, um, these CPUs, um, this is CPU1 up to CPU P, then each of these can, can access any unit of memory and also do, uh, do computation on it in a constant amount of time. That's the model. So they can access and perform any uh, on a, and, and perform computation on any unit of the memory in, in constant time. And um, so for the most general version, if we're allowing concurrent reads and concurrent writes, then they could both access the same piece of memory at the same time. You don't have to worry about conflicts. Um, and so the, 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 this, is, this is a little bit hard to implement hardware. There's also an exclusive read and exclusive write where they have essentially certain parts of the memory are designated to a certain CPU, uh, but then you can kind of flip that on and off. You don't have to transfer them. They're still sitting in the same spot. Um, so there are, um, so, so it's easier to think about this model, not worry about the conflicts in memory. There are usually some careful techniques you can do to, to, to get it Often things can work in roughly the same time and exclusive read, exclusive write. Um, so, so we're not going to worry too much about this. Um, as we've discussed a few times, this is this is for really large scale problems. This is actually usually not the best model here. Um, but it turns out that it's it's not going to be that different in how you think about these algorithms from the actual models that are actually used. Um, where if you're, if you're working on, in, say, in MapReduce or some other um, very highly parallel thing. So um, that, that, that's actually used for large data in practice. So, so we'll talk about this model because it's easier to kind of design algorithms. Okay. So, so, so any remaining questions on this model or uh, why we're using it or... Um, oh, I'll we'll just mention that, again, um, we'll be looking at two quantities, the parallel time. That's, that's the number of kind of time steps um, that, that any one processor has to make to complete some part of the algorithm and, and the work, which is the sum of all of the, the operations that all the processors do. Right, so, so this one is equal to the, you know, it's essentially the max and this is this, the sum over, over all the processors. Um, all right. Um, so, and, and for simplicity, we'll assume we essentially have as many processors as we need. If that's not true, you can kind of um, s split up the, you, you, can, you can do those, those extra, uh, you, you can break things up and do them sequentially on the processors you do have. And so you get as good speed up as is possible. Okay. So we're going to talk about these two problems, selection and max. And there's going to be one kind of um, overarching kind of um, theme that we're going to that's going to um, be common to, to, to both of these these algorithms. Um, um, it's called accelerating um, cascades. And so. This is going to work in two steps. So, what you're going to first, you're going to say, um, you're going to first run um, run a a um, a fast but large um, work um, an algorithm that's fast, about as fast as, as you as you can possibly do, but but the, it's going to take too much work, right? So you're going to, if you were to run this all the way, you're going to, the total amount of all this work, all the CPUs is, are going to do is, is going to be too much. You're going to spend too much power. Um, and then after you've run this for a while, you're going to switch to to another algorithm. Um, so, so until some 
uh, the, um, uh, so threshold, they either run a slower um, but often optimal uh, work algorithm. So, so, so it, you, you're going to reduce the problem size here to something slightly smaller than before, and then you can run something that has the optimal amount of work, but is a little bit slower, but becomes the palm size is smaller, the, 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 the total time is it's not going to be so much. Okay, so we'll show two examples of, of how this works, and if you haven't seen them before, it'll kind of be, I'll, I'll describe two different algorithms which themselves are not optimal, but we'll be able to combine them all, um, um, to combine them together in a way that's going to greatly improve what we can do. Yeah. By optimal, you mean uh, the error bounds are less? Um, so the optimal works. So the mm -hmm. you can you can look at the at the an algorithm that's run on one processor, right? The the best, um, and look at the total time that that algorithm takes on one processor. And you may know, say, sorting takes n log n time. Um, finding the maximum element in a set takes, uh, takes linear time. You can't have the work of a parallel algorithm be less asymptotically than that of a sequential algorithm. So you can kind of know what the optimal work is. So the optimal work will generally be the, the sequential, um, the same as the sequential runtime. Right, so, so, so that's what I mean by, uh, by optimal work. And the unoptimal threshold for p time is also the sequential time. Well, no, the the, the parallel time. So that that's kind of a worst case. You can often do much better parallel time, like you do like log n parallel time. Like I forget what we did before. We you know we did. Um, the, there's a sorting algorithm which I didn't describe that takes uh, only log n parallel time. Whereas it takes n log n sequential time. Right? We describe a log squared n parallel time sorting out. That's much faster than the sequential time. That, that, that's why I was saying the unoptimal threshold. Oh. Oh. Me, meaning. Oh, if, yeah, the unoptimal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's pretty vacuous, I guess, when you say unoptimal. Um, okay. Um, so let's first look at um, the selection problem. So, and we're going to take in a set A and the value K, and as usual, the set is going to have size N. Okay? And so the goal um, um, is to find A in the set A um, such that the set of a prime in A such that A prime is less than A, um, the set is equal to, um, the size of the set is equal to K minus 1. Right, so there are K minus 1 elements which are smaller than A. So this would be, you want to find this element A in the set such that there are K minus 1 elements smaller. So if, so then the simple way to solve this um, so, so let's look at a couple algorithms. Um, <coughs> uh, so, so sequentially, um, yes. Yeah, so, um, so sequentially, you can do this in O of n time. Um, so I've the, now. If you haven't thought about this, you can do an O of n time. Um, it might be a little confusing, but we mentioned this linear time algorithm for, 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 for finding the median. And it was actually a generalization of this algorithm for selection, which works in linear time. So you can solve this sequentially in, in linear time. Um, so, so, but a, a simple way of doing it, um, there's another sequential algorithm which is pretty obvious, which is n um, log n time, right? So, so what is the obvious way to to solve this problem in n log n time? Sort. 
Yeah, so you sort them and then you take the one, the kth one in the array. So if you're going to take this, um, um, sorry, if you're going to take this algorithm by sorting, then if you convert this into a parallel time algorithm, um, um, how well would this work? Well, again, if I remember right. Right, right. So, um, um, so the first algorithm you, you can do in um, in p time o of log n and work is going to be the work is going to be um, n log n. Right? So, so this is too much work because to completely sort things you need to spend n log n time um, if you're doing it sequentially. But if you just want to select something you can do it in O of n time. So we want to get the work down to closer to O of n. Um, or to actually O of n. Okay. So um, that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to show how to get the, what we're actually going to do is the, we're going to get um, a, the, the p time equal to log n times log, log n, and the work equals O of n. So I'm going to get an extra log log n factor in the parallel time. Um, in most problems, log log n is probably probably constant, but um, so we're going to have an extra log log n factor. Okay, so to to do this, I'm going to describe um, another algorithm, which is going to take is going to go from size m to a, a problem of size um, 3 fourths m. And so I, and doing this is going to take O of n work and O log n um, p time. Okay, so, this, so that's reduced the problem size from m to three, three quarters m. So then if I wanted to completely solve the selection problem, so basically I'm taking a set of size m and I'll output a smaller set. And I know the answer is somewhere in the smaller set. So, so I can recursively call this, right? Uh, 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 um, if I recursively call this uh, on log n times, Eventually, the problem size is going to be constant, and I can stop. Right? So this will lead to, but doing that is not going to be great. That would be O of n um, so, so I guess this should be n. Um, doing that would, um, would only be O of n work. Um, but the the p time would be o of log um, o of log squared m um, p time, um, which is not going to be great. Okay, but we're going to use this thing where we just reduce the problem size, and we're going to use that together with something else, and use this accelerating cascade technique to kind of get something with these these better bounds. Okay, so how does this algorithm work? Um, so, I should mention that the input of the set um, is, is going to be unsorted. Um, it, it, if that wasn't clear, if it's sorted, the problem is easy, right? So, this is going to be our input set A. And what we're going to do is we're going to break it into these uh, um, on these blocks, and they're going to be um, m over m over log n blocks, 
And so then each block AI is going to be log M size. Why are we saying that M is about three quarters of M? Would what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the problem to another problem with many fewer elements. Three quarters of the number of elements. And it's, it's going to be another instance of the selection problem, but with three quarters the size. And so, the, 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 it's, so, it, so like if you're doing um, like binary search, you know, if, if you, you, you can compare to some median element, and then you know if it's smaller, your query is smaller than the median element, you have half, half the problem size before. So we're not going to get into half the problem size, we're going to get to three quarters of the problem size. So hopefully it'll, it'll become clear once I describe the outcome. Okay, so for, then for each of these sets, um, so, so then this was, step one was splitting it up. Step two is, is for um, I equals uh, one to um, M over log M. Um, we're going to do this in parallel. Um, um, we're going to let xi equals the um, um, sequential median of AI. Okay, so for each of these sets, we're going to, because each of them is the size of log m, we're, we can spend, in parallel, we can spend, uh, just run the sequential median algorithm in, in O of this, the size of the sets time, right? The size of the set is only log m, so this only takes uh, um, log m parallel time, and and the total um, the total work here is only O of m as well. Okay, and we're getting these these sets xi, um, th these values xi, and there are going to be m over log m of these values. Um, And then, uh, um, we're going to um, let x equals the um, median of, um, of this set. Okay, so, so now we have these m log m things, we're going to take the median of these. And this time we're we're going to use um, uh, we're going to use algorithm one, which was over here. We're going to use this algorithm where we sort. Okay, so the, the sorting is going to take um, log n time. N now is m over log m, so this is still this is the parallel time is still log m. Uh, but the work was, was n log n. But n, n is now m over log n. Um, right, so the work here is going to be m over log m uh, times log of m over log m. So this log m and this log m are going to cancel. All right, so this is equal to O of m log. All right, so I spent uh, log m parallel time here, log m parallel time here. Um, now I claim once I have this value x, I can reduce the problem size to what's Another selection problem of size three quarters the size. Um, so we're going to create. Um, so so from A, um, what we're going to do is is we're going to create three sets, L, M, and, and, and R, where where L equals 
the elements in A such that A is less than X, R equals elements of, uh, of A where A is greater than X, and M equals elements of A where A is equal to X. Okay, so, so now we need to look at this, this value K of the selection. If, if K, we're going to look at the size of, of L. If, if, the, if the size of L is greater than K, um, then we're going to recur with the same algorithm on L. If, it's, if, if K is, is, is um, smaller than L plus R, then we're going to recur um, the same algorithm. I mean, it's smaller than L plus M, then we're going to recur the same algorithm on R, but we're going to have to shift, shift K a little bit. So uh, let me write out this if state. So, um, um, so if the size of L is less is uh, is greater than K, then what we're going to call is algorithm two um, select L K if L plus M is less than k, then we're going to call algorithm 2, this select on r, and we're going to do k minus the size of l minus the size of m. Um, and if not, if it's neither of these cases, we're just going to return any of the values in the set m. Because the, one of those is going to have rank k, they all have the same rank. What did you write on the second line for step five? I'm trying to read your writing. Yeah, so sorry. So if L plus M is less than K, so, it, so that means that we've divided, we've taken the set and we've split it on this value X, right? L are all the things less than X, M are all the things equal to X. If there are more than K things in the sets L and M, that means the thing ranked K must be in the set R. So then we're going to recur on the set R, and we need to adjust the value K that we recur with. So, so that's all that's going on here. So sorry, it's a little, it's pretty, handwriting's pretty bad, sorry. Okay, so uh, it's key. It's, I, I've written this out exactly in the notes. Uh, I, I, I understand, the, the board's at a weird angle, so your hand can't do its normal good yeah. job. Uh, so, so is it clear what's going on here? So if it's unclear, I'll rewrite it in some of but so 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 th this is these are the instances of the smaller problem sizes so let's before we look at this three quarters m claim let's just look at this this step this can be done in o of m work in constant parallel time right each element you can you can throw into one of these sets in um in you can look at them individually and compare them so, so, so this can be done in, uh, in, in constant time. So if you, if you don't have exclusive, um, if, if, if you don't have concurrent reads, all of the operations need to use this value x. So you need to kind of uh, replicate this. And you can do that with only log m. So if you need. So, um, so, so this step you can also do an O of n work in, in, in less than parallel. Um, log m time, and then this is the recursive call. So, so now we just need to claim that um, that that neither r nor l is going to be greater than three three fourths of uh, the total set size, right? So, well, doesn't that relate to the definition of a median? Well, this value x is not the median of everything. Right, this is not the exact median. Well, we haven't done that. We've taken the median of all of these things, and then we've taken the, the median of these, right? So, so what you can think of is that at least, at least half of these guys that I found have, um, so are at least half of these 
are going to be larger than x. And of all the, and each of these correspond to a, a, a group AI, and that means at least half of the elements of AI are also going to be larger than x because they were larger, they were larger than these values. So the half of one half of all elements is a quarter of all the elements. So that means both the set L and the set R are going to be at least a quarter of the elements. If, so this, um, and if they're at least a quarter of the elements, that means the other one cannot be more than three quarters of the elements. So you need to be a little bit careful here. There could be a lot of ties happening right at one of these values, and that's why you need to worry about this other set M in case there are a lot of ties. Um, but if you don't have any ties, then you don't really need to worry about the set. So th that means that the set L or the set R th that I'm recurring on is going to be sized at most 3 quarters M. So I've reduced the column size by 3 quarters. Okay, so the, this is another algorithm. It took um, log squared N parallel time and O of M work. So this is, in some sense, it's, it's better in terms of the work than this first algorithm we had. Um, but the parallel time is a lot worse. So, so now we're going to show how to combine these together to get something that's going to have the optimal amount of work, um, O of M work, um, but is going to reduce this parallel time. So, um, okay. Um, so how would I do that? Yeah. Just, uh, uh, size of n plus size of n is greater than k, then we don't have a solution. If size of L plus the size of M is, is greater than k. I mean, the first condition holds the second. Yeah. In the second okay, case. so if that's the case, then, yeah, so so I didn't write up the third case, right? So, so either you're going to have um, M is equal to the size of L, plus the size of M, plus the size of R. K. K. Well, no, M is the total number of elements, right? Oh. Yeah, so this is total uh, number of elements, yeah. So now, and I know that all the elements of L are less than all the elements of M, which are less than all of the elements of R. Right, so this is M is the absolute value of M is not the same as the absolute value of A, or did I misunderstand what you just said? So this is this is equal to the cardinality of A. Okay, that okay. makes more sense. So I split A into these three sets. Okay. So now I know that all these are less than all these are less than all these, right? So if the size of L is 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 less than k, I mean is greater than k, it, then the right element must be in here, right? If if the size of R is greater than M minus K, then, it, then an element must be in here. So this same way of saying that, because this is equal to M, that if, if L plus M is, is going to be um, less than K, the sum of these is less than K, then K, the K one must be in R. Okay, but th that leaves out the case of that that um, th that th say say L is equal to 100 or is 100 M is equal to 10 and R is equal to 100 and let's say that K is 105. Well, then it's not that K is greater than L, but L plus M is also greater than K. Well, then it must be an M. But all the elements of M have exactly the same value, so I can return any of these. So if neither of these conditions are met, then I just return x, or I return some element of a. Um, so else, uh, return x. Sorry. The goal is it should be less than k. Uh, strongly less than k. It cannot be equal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So so I didn't define that. 
very precisely. So let's see. Um, so this should be less than equal, less than equal k plus one, and a prime in, in a is such that a prime is greater than a, it must be greater or equal to uh, n minus k. Okay, so if they're ties, you have some flexibility. So if you look in, in, the, in the notes, everything should be extremely precise. Um, I hope. Okay. Um, so, so how do I combine together these two algorithms to get O of M, O of N work, but with uh, smaller, smaller parallel time? Let's go back. So I'm going to run a faster algorithm, and then I'm going to run a slower algorithm. Right. So the slower algorithm is, is going to be let's see the um, so, um, so 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 what I'm going to do is I I'm not going to run this full algorithm. I'm going to run this. The, this this uh, this recursive step some number of times. Um, I've got that backwards as it turns out. Um, okay, so so what you're going to actually do is so. So, this, so I've got these two steps in the wrong order. Um, so you're first going to run a slower algorithm with optimal work until the problem set reduces, and then you can run a faster argument that takes more work to kind of finish. So, okay, so let's, so, this, so I'm first going to run the slower algorithm, which is this log squared m time algorithm, right? And I'm going to run it until the problem size reduces. When the problem size is, and I'm going to run it until the problem size is small enough so that if I run algorithm one, I don't do too much work, right? So, so that means I'm going to I'm going to run um, algo two until um, from n to m, where m is going to be equal to n over log n. All right. So if I do this, if I, I output here a set of size m, which is n over log n. And then I put this into algorithm 1. The total work is only going to be O of n, right? Um, so then, so let's go into a set b. And then I'm going to run algo 1 on, on b. And so this is going to take um, parallel time log m, which is going to be equal to log n. And the work is going to be m log m, which is actually n over log n times log n over log n, which is equal to O of n. So if, after I reduce it to down to the size, I can run algorithm one and only log in parallel time and only takes all of that work. Okay, so now I need to just, just worry about how long does it take for me to run algorithm one until the size is, is n over log n. So 
So basically, I need um, the number of steps. Um, so after after s steps, I'm going to have n is so that m is going to be equal to three quarter to the power s of n. Right, because every step I reduce the size by a factor three quarters. And I want this to be equal to n over log n, which means I want three quarters s to be one over log n. And this means I want s to be O of um, Log log n. So I only need to reduce it, I only need to run this for uh, a log log n steps, and then I've reduced the size to small enough so I can run out of the log. So, so what that's going to mean is that I'm going to run this, this algorithm, this get, um, so the this, the parallel time is then going to be log of m times log log m. So then this algorithm, doing this part of the parallel time, is going to be log n times log log n. And the work is going to be how much? most m times, or n times log log n. Um, but every time I run it, I'm, uh, I'm geometrically decreasing the size. So the most work I do is in the first set. Right? So, the, so this is, is going to be equal to the sum from i equals 1 to, um, to log log n of 3 orders to the i times n. Okay, so, so if you look at this, this is n plus 3 quarters n plus 9 sixteenths n plus uh, 27 over uh, 64. 64 n. Right, if you, if you sum all these up, it's, it's still going to be O of n. Um, it's going to be, at, I think, at most, what is this trying to be on it? Um, like four thirds n or something, right? It's, um, it's, um, so, th so this is going to be um, less or equal to four thirds n. Which is so the work is still over. Okay, so. The, this is how you're you're going to come up with. You know, so, so if you can come up with different algorithms with different trade-offs between the parallel time and the work, then you can combine them often to get even faster algorithms. Um, so and the, the the key thing is you the, the key thing that comes up over and over again in these large-scale parallel things is you want to reduce the problem size to um, into smaller sets. If you can reduce the problem size, then you can you can do something else. Often, what um, what happens if you're not working in, in PRAM is when you but you're doing something where the you don't have shared memory. What happens is you reduce the problem size small enough so that it all fits on one machine, and then you can run something on one machine. Um, um, so so we're doing um, and in the process of doing that. Uh, you don't want to spend too much time or do too much work. Um, is there a bit 
question why three by four is chosen? Why not any other fraction? Um, so the so the, the, the three fourths is an easy bound you can get by looking at this this algorithm here because you're taking uh, the median of, of these mediums. Um, I if you um, so if you remember the I think I mentioned the linear time median algorithm and you do you break these up into sets of size five instead of size log m but then you you have to do recursion here is um, not here you have to do you have to run a different algorithm here um, because you have you still have um, you have you have m over five sets instead of m, m over log m sets. Um, if, if you do that, I think you can get a slightly better thing than, than three quarters. I think we got seven tenths uh, before, which is better than seventy-five percent. Um, but with this algorithm, you get three quarters. So that's where the three quarters comes from. Um, but really, any constant factor you reduce the size, you're going to get. It's going to take log log m steps to reduce it from m to m over log. So um, hopefully, if you when you you take when you've taken an advanced algorithms class, you'll play with some of these different recurrences. And get, get okay, so that was one example um, of of how to do this this fractional cascading. Let me do the other example I want to do is is the max. Um, so the max is a special case of selection, right? If I want if I said x, if I said k equal to n, then I'm going to get the max, right? So I can do it in um, in O of n work in log n times log log n time. I, I, I'm going to do much better here. I'm going to get only log log n time parallel time. Okay, so let me kind of erase this, this part here. Is that is it clear? Okay, so um, um so max um, so the input is gonna be um, a set uh, that's going to be unsorted A um, such that the cardinality of A is 10 and you want to find um, the largest um, the largest element okay. by the obvious extension this also works for smallest and such yeah. Okay, so so, this, so if we do this um, sequentially this is going to take all that time, right? Okay, so, so we're first going to so again we're going to do two different algorithms with different trade-offs, and then we're going to show how to combine these together. Um, the first algorithm, one, is, is going to take parallel time O of one, um, but the work is going to be pretty huge. So it's going to take O of n squared work, but constant parallel time. Um, so how would we do this? Oh, well, you already previewed this. Uh, this, 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 this looks like we almost want to bubble sort it or something like that. Well, uh, a bubble sort is pretty sequential, right? But you want to. It's it's going to well, be. Well, I'm, I'm okay. Sort using some one of the n squared algorithms. At least that's what I'm inferring from the work equals n, order n squared. Yeah, so, so, um, 
Um, so, so you have n elements, and if you, so, so we're doing, you, the, the max you only need to do comparisons between elements, right? So how many possible comparisons can you do? So all, all we need to do is n. What? All we need to do is n. Well, let's, uh, so in some sense this algorithm is, is very stupid, right? You're doing n squared work. If this was sequential, you would, you would never do it this way, right? Um, but uh, let's say we did um, these, uh, so, so they're only n squared um, actual comparisons. So you have n squared processes to compare all possible. Yeah, okay, so, so I'm gonna do all comparisons. Yeah. In parallel. So I'm gonna do all these comparisons in parallel. Okay, so I've spent I, I can do this in O of O of one parallel time. It takes O of n squared work. Um, Okay, now what? Right, our goal is to find the maximum element. <laughs> so, what's going to happen with the maximum element? It should be pretty big. So that's it probably not the answer to that. Could be returned by n minus one plus. Processes returning the biggest out of two numbers. And that number will be returned n minus one times. Mm -hmm. right. So, all right, so let me write um, down this array. So you have A here, right, and you have B. Okay, and so I'm going to. Start by setting all of B. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a put a one in in all of these spots of B. Now let's say that this element AI is the max, and I'm gonna do all of these n choose two comparisons. So let's say I compared I have A J and I made a comparison between here. A I is going to be larger. That means now A J, the Jth element, can't can't be the max. Right? If it's if it ever loses in one of these, these comparisons, it can't be the max. So I'm going to change this from a 1 to a 0. And I'll do this for all of all the pairs. For each one, for each of the elements, I will always compare it to at least the max among some other ones. And every time, if it ever loses, I'm going to set these elements to zero. This one will not get set to zero. So then I can have another processor, another <coughs> parallel thing, go through and look at all these and say, if it is a one, I'll put this as the max. If it's a zero, I'm, I'm not going to. Only one of them can have a one left in, in this in this bit array. Right, so that's how I can output this max in only um, constant parallel time. Okay, so it's careful when you when you look at this, I'm really bending on the some of the assumptions here. If I I have to be able to um, concurrently write to all of these bits. I could have, I'm going to have two things in parallel. So, so let's say that aj plus 1, let's say aj plus 1 is greater than a, aj. So I'm also going to make this comparison here. Both of these comparisons are a separate processor. Each of them are going to try and update this to zero. They may try and do it at essentially at the same time. I'm going to be concurrently writing a zero on this bit. So I have to have concurrent writes. So when you, when you implement in, in, in hardware, 
concurrent writes, typically you will you allow to do things like this, where they can both write, but I'm, I'm not going to read any of this until this whole round is over. I finish the comparisons. And they're both trying to write the same thing. It always starts on a one, they're both trying to write it to a zero. So the order that I write them, you know, it doesn't matter. It's already a zero. So it doesn't matter if I rewrite it over with another zero. But this is the sort of thing that, that the concurrent writes can, you can do in hardware um, with, without, uh, uh, without too much pain. Um, otherwise, you have to, the hardware has to worry about locking if you may be writing different things on top. The other sort of things it can kind of do is it can do some increments, but that's much more difficult to do. If it's just flipping a bit, saying zero out a bit, that's something it can do concurrently. Okay, but d d doing this with uh, um, exclusive rights, I believe, is, is I, I don't think this is possible, but I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Okay, so, as, so as, as long as you're writing the same number, you're, you're okay. Yeah. You don't need to worry about any atomic operation whatsoever, or cache coherence there. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if you have multiple CPUs, each CPU would have its own C local cache, and then multiple threads would start doing, and then if you write different things, you'll have different things in your caches, and then you have to lock. But the thing is, in this case, you don't need to lock. And you can a normal CPU, Intel CPU does this completely normal, it's super easy. Right. Yeah, so so if you don't... I mean, this concurrent write is not really... It is concurrent write in terms of writing concurrent, but it's not problematic. So if you, if, you, if you think of it, though, the hardware actually has to process every one of these parallel operations. <coughs> so say if you did have N-squared processors, each of them would want to send a, a something to the hardware, flip this bit to zero. So this bit needs to be flipped n different times. So there is something, something sequential going on there. Whether the hardware can actually compress these or do it quickly, or that's much faster than, than actually pulling it into the CPU is, is probably probably the case. But so you're, we're playing a little bit of tricks here, regardless if this is pretty easy to do with the caches. I don't think, I don't think of the, there's any sequential. Sequentiality of the hardware. But you're, you need to flush all of the caches. No, you don't flush. That's the thing. You don't flush. That's really important. You don't need to flush. Otherwise, you, you would need to have an atomic operation, which requires on the hardware level to flush. Yeah. But this yeah. is a special instruction and it's, uh, it depends, it depends on the. Yeah. So in this case, that's the whole thing. You don't need to cache because you will have the same value in all different ca caches. Yeah. So. so it, it, it's it, it's a special thing that you can get the hardware to actually do. Whether, um, but not all hardware will actually be, you know, I, 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 I may not actually handle this problem. Um, but um, okay, so um, so so we can do this. So this algorithm, it's clear. So let's. let's See another algorithm. Um, this one apparently is going to take um, the p time is log log n and uh, um, and the work here. It's going to be O of n on log log n. So, um, so, so we're much closer here on the work, um, but we're not quite to O of n, which is what we want. So, um, so all right. So, we're going to use a similar trick here, where we're going to divide the problem up into these subproblems. From A1. So, uh, what, can I just answer one more thing to algorithm one? Yeah. I, I think I just, you can do it in concurrent read exclusive write. You know what you need to do? You just need to make n copies of that array. Basically, you don't need to make n copies. You just make an, a, like a square, a rectangle array. Yeah. Okay, and then that eat 
processors that, pro that processes the ith number right in that square, just one or zero, and then just checks. Do you understand? So we have basically a rectangle, of, and each processor gets its own cell. So, so, so instead of being yeah. an array, you have yeah, actually, actually just like this. So it's it's got in this direction. Yeah, and the number of processors down there. In this direction, it's got um, n yeah. or or actually let's say p. Okay. Yeah, but there. Good. So so now this one, yeah. this column is going to be all ones. This column maybe may have some, you know, some number of ones, some number of zeros. Okay. So eventually I want to write, I, I, I want to designate this one's the max. How do I do that? Big by 10. Hmm? It goes big by 10. Yeah, but how do I do that in O of 1 parallel time? Two concurrent. Yeah, so there's... You have to. I, 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 I'm not completely sure on this. I, I don't. I, I don't know what's possible, but I think you need to have some special hardware to actually do this. I, I don't think you can. You can solve it this way. You still have the same problem. You need to combine this linear number of things into one number. Um, and if, if you do, if you have the concurrent right, you can still do it here. Um, but I think you still need. Okay, so this algorithm, we're going to break the array up into sets again, but instead of being sets of size log n, they're going to be sets of size square root n. Okay? Um, and then what we're going to do is um, for i equals 1 to square root n, and we're going to do this in parallel, then we're going to um, say xi is equal to the L1 max of, of AI. Right, so now on each of these sets of size squared n, I'm going to call this algorithm 1. 